So good day, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Community Central, the video cast where we examine different open source communities and projects uh, around the world to get an idea of what's going on um, as far as open source innovation. Before I introduce today's guest, I certainly want to do the usual housekeeping notes. For those of you not familiar with the BlueJeans Primetime platform, there is a Q&A tool. So if you have any questions for our presenter, certainly uh, get them into the Q&A tool, vote on the ones you like, and after the presentation and demonstrations, we will ask the questions to our presenter in the order of most liked. So pretty simple. So housekeeping out of the way, let me introduce uh, today's guest, Klaus Ibsen, who is coming to us from Denmark, also known as Mr. Camel. And Klaus, welcome to Community Central. Um, please, by all means, take it away. Thank you very much, Brian, and welcome everybody to this webinar. So let me get started by sharing the screen if I am getting the right buttons, you know. So just hang on. So <clears throat> everybody should be able to see the presentation slides now. So let me just hit the present button and let's get rolling. So yes, welcome um, to this webinar about um, basically Quarkus and Camel, two great stuff. Um, so I'm a software engineer from Wellhead. I've uh, been working on Camel for, yeah, a very long time. Also wrote a couple of books on, on Camel. And as Brian said, I'm from Denmark. And there are some um, social media links where you can find, find me. So just for the folks that are not familiar with Camel, I will just spend a few minutes talking about what is Camel. So Camel is actually the Swiss knife of integration. Or you can picture Camel as a giant Swiss knife of integration. It comes with a lot of functionality. But the good news is that you don't have to know everything. You can just use the part of Camels that you need and only carry that with you. So Camel is an integration library. So you use Camel to integrate systems. So there are many different systems out today, and they have different transports and protocol, the data formats and whatnot. And it can be a bit tricky to get those to talk together. And Camel is there to do that for you. And in Camel, then you can integrate systems by writing Camel routes. Route. So Camel, the idea behind Camel actually came from um, the enterprise integration patterns. Uh, they are actually from a book that was published 15 years ago. That book um, has common integration solutions known as design patterns, and here on the slide you have some of them. So what was done is to implement a software that comes with these design patterns or out of the box, and that's Camel. Now, Camel also comes with a lot of components, or you can call them connectors. So you can connect to more than 300 systems with Camel and basically integrate yeah, anything or almost anything. If not, you can always build your own component. Um, and speaking of components, there are so many of them, we can have them on a single slide, um, but you can go to the Camel website where you can see all the components we have for different, you can say, classic files and protocols and messagings to, to legacy system to Kafka and cloud systems and public clouds with Azure, Google and Amazon and whatnot. So there's many, many. Um, now in Camel, you integrate system by, you know, writing routes or Camel routes. And in Camel, that is, you know, dominating in, in Java, Java code or XML. But, you know, we also offer in, in the latest Camel 3 version, you can define Camel routes in other languages like Groovy, Kotlin, JavaScript, and YAML. And we're going to see YAML later in the demos. So on the slide, um, the routes are similar uh, in functionality. So we are picking up files from the S3 uh, on S3 and sending to a Telegram bot. Um, yeah. That's basically the gist of it. And if you've never seen and programmed Camel before, you can kind of get a um, sort of understanding what this integration is doing just by looking at that uh, code. 
Uh, Camel runs on all the popular Java-based uh, runtimes, whether it's Spring Boot or Quarkus, which we're going to see in, in the demos and whatnot more today. You have traditional topic main Camel, that is what we call standalone. You can run in Tomcat and OSGI, we have Carafe, and also on the cloud with uh, Kubernetes and Knative. And Kafka, for example, with Kafka connectors and other runtimes like Vertex and Java E app servers like Wildfly and whatnot. But at the end of the day, uh, Camel is just a library, so it's essentially just a set of jar files, so you can actually embed and use Camel anywhere you want. Um, the Camel community is very large. Uh, product Camel has been around for yeah, 14 years, and that's quite an impressive in today's open source landscape where, you know, open source products comes and they dry out and die and whatnot, but Camel has been around for all the time. You can see the activity in, in, in commits uh, over the years. There's quite a lot of activity, and in recent times we have picked up that. Uh, the more com contributors and more people working on it, and we have more projects, and it's also more easy to contribute to upstream open source today in, in lights and thanks to GitHub, where people can more easily do pull requests and whatnot. And I say this because we are coming, you know, Camel was created before GitHub. So it was back in the days where we used patch files and subversion and these kind of things. So that's also um, a community that was, we've seen quite a lot under the sun with Camel. Uh, and speaking of Camel 3, that is the latest installment of Camel. And, you know, so the joke is that if you know Camel and it's Camel 2 has been around for, you know, almost 10 years. So, why some people are joking, why hasn't there been a camel tree in, in, in Duna? And uh, we say that, you know, we had to look for the nature to catch up and proceed a, a 300 camel. So a while back, we got a sighting from Australia where they said there was a 300 camel in the, in the desert. So we got going and, and started working on camel tree. Uh, camel tree is now an ecosystem of projects. Before there was one giant product. So in three, we still have Camel, which is the Swiss knife of integration, but you can run Camel on Spring Boot, where it's essentially first cloud integration with Spring Boot, with Staras and everything like that. Uh, for OSGI, that's Carafe. And for day, today's talk, we're going to focus more on Camel K, on, as Camel on Kubernetes and K native, which are, you know, cloud native and serverless. And of course, also Quarkus and there's the Kafka connectors. And those are the camel projects. And there's actually one more, just one more. The latest one is Camelis. And we'll get back to that why this is a awesome new thing in, in camel or for camel. So we start with <clears throat> camel and quarkus. So um, so Camel and Quarkus together, that's Camel Quarkus. So what you get is the awesome integration capabilities from Camel with the awesome you know, library that Quarkus is with the supersonic subatomic Quarkus runtime. Yes, that's actually the tagline. If you go to the Quarkus website, they say it's a supersonic subatomic. It's part of the name because a quark, quark is the smallest entity in a, the atom. So it's very small and tiny. Now, I will not be giving a presentation in, in journal about Quarkus. Uh, I can't give that justice. There are other talks and probably, you know, the bit talks on this community central TV as well, where they have common Quarkus. But you may think Quarkus is something like Spring Boot, and that's just one piece of the puzzle. The other one is actually a very compelling thing, it is Quarkus is also moving the goalpost in terms of what can be done about build time of augmenting to your application. So here on the slide, what Quarkus allows you to do is to, you know, do some enhancement to your applications before you run them. And pay attention, you can run it in two sets. You can run it in standard JVMs, or you can also go full native where you actually compile down to native binaries using something called Growl. Um, but you get the benefit from Quarkus either way. So you don't have to go either one or the other. So that's really a fantastic. But if we go back and look at what, a, let's say, before Quarkus, a traditional way of starting up at G 
JVM in a Java application. It was essentially to build time as a package and compile and everything at, at ahead of time, sort of like uh, the build time. And then at runtime, you take that bytecode and run it. Now, there's a bootstrap process in that runtime where you look configuration file, pass uh, JVM system options and, and whatnot. You do some class by scanning to load additional classes, you know, like Spring Boot with the starters and Quarkus is also having extension. And Camel itself is also allows to just enable features by just adding uh, classes to the class path. And then you sort of build up that model, what's enabled and whatnot, and initialize many things and whatnot. And then you start to, you know, need to uh, start some threads and open some sockets and HTTP and whatnot. So that's a quite a, you know, from a JVM point of view, it's a, it's a lengthy process. Now, on the other hand, what Quarkus brings to the table is to move ahead some of that work to build time. So you can tell Quarkus, it can load some of these conversion files. You can do class file scanning ahead of time and build some sort of intermediate module of what that is. And then at that time, it builds it. So the runtime is much quicker to bootstrap and run. And if you look at it from the camera point of view, what we do is to you know scan for Components that are available on the class party, any additional camel routes you have just coded are available and other factories that camel can bootstrap and do some wiring and many other things. So that's a, a fantastic way of being able to start up camel quicker. So what happens at runtime when you use camel focus is that all this is warmed up and ready. And then, you know, all camel is doing is starting the routes. And Actually, we are pushing for the second half of this year to optimize even further the runtime parts to do some more ahead of time, build time um, of your camel routes on a certain circumstances that will allow this. So we are preparing for that in the camel core project and then the camel caucus project will catch up. Now, the, the camel caucus guys are currently in the process of actually migrating the product to Quarkus 2 because Quarkus 2 is in development and then to be released, you know, in a few months time. And so that's the way that those guys are busy with that. So, you know, we are not disturbing them, but it will come in in the second half of this year, you know, even more optimization. So, um, I'll just show a few slides, you know, with, um, uh, camel applications that are running with Quarkus, you can boot it up in, let's say, 1.4 seconds. This was actually from my very old laptop that's uh, four and a half years old. I'm actually in between to transfer to a um, desktop computer. Uh, you no, know, with COVID, there's no travel, so I'm staying home. And I bought one of these new Mac Minis M1 chip, new architecture. So uh, it's very fast, but, you know, it's still an architecture. So some things that are not 100% working as the Intel chipset, but it's, it's catching up. Uh, but on the old one, if you start it up in native compile, it's much faster, you know, 28 milliseconds to start up an entire app. Um, and Camel, pay attention, Camel is on, only taking five milliseconds. And that's one of the things we've been doing in recent time of Camel. You can see we separate the different phases Camel are doing when it starts up. So Camel tracks what Hamas is doing in the build phase, how much it does is the initializing phase, and then the actual start phase. So you can see the initializing and start phase is, is four and one millisecond. And the build times is of course zero because that's already been done here by build time optimization from Quarkus. Okay, so let's try a, a little demo so what i'm going to exit the slides and go to a shell so let me go here for this is uh, one of the examples that come with camel quarkus examples you can find on github is the http log example so i already loaded that inside my editor and uh, so the idea is they can from a terminal just say maven quarkus dev so quarkus comes with a maven plugin that allows you to run in developer mode it also a Gradle plugin, so it actually just keep running. So it's booted up this camel applications, and we can go. This is something that access on localhost 88. And if you access that one, you get a nice little welcome screen that tells you what the endpoints Quarkus comes with and which ones you can actually call from a REST service. So just before we try the application, I'll just see this new one. This is a developed UI, so you can get look at what extensions are currently installed and running in this. Focus application. You can look at uh, what beams it has in the CDI bean registry. Um, you can look at the remove beans. That means this, these are beans that are 
were able, but you know, Quarkus has to they figured out that this can be optimized to not even be included. So that's some optimization for you and so on. Uh, the health, you can see health checks, you can see camel health check is up and so on. So if you try the example, then there's an endpoint called camel hello, where you can see camel runs on, um, on this is my new machine, right? So if I go here and say, this is the camel wrap, you can see here it says camel runs on. So I can say camel tree runs on. And I go here and I refresh the screen. Uh, okay, it was reloading, but here it is camel tree runs on. So basically it's just you can go and, and refresh and it you know auto updates. It also works for adding new classes and many things. So the idea is that August demo can do quite a lot of hot swap, hot swap on the fly. But if something stops failing, you can just stop it and then start it again. Okay, um, that's it for Camel Quarkus and this little tiny demo. You can find the examples on from the Camel website where we have linked to all the examples for the different sub products in Camel. I'll just terminate this editor so we we'll give a little more memory back and we go back here and present. Um, in in Camel Quarkus product, we are they're called extensions, all these, uh, like Spring Boot Starters, they're called extensions in Quarkus. And we are porting all these common components as extension in, and we don't quite a lot. So 309 are ported and they are both work in JVM mode and, and uh, native mode. And there's about 90 or so that are only JVM mode. So they're not fully um, supporting on native compilation, but this is a, a goal we want to do. And it takes some while to do that. And then there's some that are not supported, which means they I mean, they don't make sense to run on, uh, let's say, Cloud Native or Quarkus platform or, or something like that. Uh, so why Camel on Quarkus? You know, you get a very small uh, applications because Quarkus is able to, you know, dead code eliminate and optimize and remove stuff you don't need and build a fat jar that only has what you need. And you can compile that to even Native as well. It has a very fast boot time, it reduces the memory footprint, and it's really it's, it's also about scaling, especially in, in, the, in the cloud workloads where you need to be more elastic and be able to scale your workloads when there's only demand for it. Because now we are starting to pay per uses of our workloads in the, in the cloud. So we want to avoid you know, paying money when we don't really need it. So if we can build an architecture where our applications can scale up and scale down how to make based on load, uh, that's important. And for that, then the, your application and Java set must be faster to scale up and also to scale down. Uh, but this is kernel, you know, quarters itself that are also capable of doing that. So let's take a turn and talk a bit about Camel K, what that is. Um, so Camel K is an integration platform that are using Camel, but it's born on Kubernetes. With serverless superpowers, providing a cloud native integration platform with the heart of Kubernetes. Oh, so awesome. Uh, well, it's quite an innovative project and it's quite a new thing to Camel. So it's very exciting. Um, so why is that? So there is a so it's for cloud native architectures. So there's a trend where we've been going from a monolithic architecture to microservice, but we are probably also looking at, okay, we want some workloads to be cloud native. And for that, <clears throat> we have to separate, you know, the business logic from what you can consider is infrastructure or platform concerns. So, but we haven't really gotten so far yet. Uh, even if we start to build these microservice architecture with, let's say, microservice one architect with Spring Boot or something like that, you end up, you know, having to include, you know, platform concerns in your microservice application where you have, you know, need for observability, you have some logging and metrics, and you have some health checks for probes, and you have maybe circuit breakers and other things that get convoluted and added together with your business logic. So we're looking for a truly cloud native architecture and platform, but that's what Kama Kaken brings to the table with uh, Kubernetes and also uh, Knative. So these are the key players in, in that stack. Uh, as I said, Kubernetes, Knative, and you know, we want also 
reliable networking and we can use Envoy and something like a service mesh. There are different implementations. One will be Istio and whatnot. But you can also get all of that out of the box with the uh, OpenShift. In the bottom, we have Camel, Camel K for lightweight uh, connectivity and connectors and all that kind of thing. So let's move on and see a little bit of Camel K in action. So I come jump back to a terminal. So <clears throat> here I am, oops, that's the wrong example. This, so, sorry. I was trying to put them in, in the right order. So, um, uh, so I actually just have a Kubernetes. There is the camel K installed, which is an operator that's, you know, is doing all the magic. We'll get back to that. So I can actually, I have a command line tool called camel. I can say init and then I can say, uh, I want to write an integration that is a full job file. It can be, um, it doesn't have to be Java. It could also be, you know, all the other languages we talked about, uh, YAML and XML and Google, but not. So it gives you sort of like this one. Uh, I can run this one if I want. Um, so I have to, um, I'm not remembering all the, uh, yes, stack Apache Cam K integration. I just want to demonstrate that you can, Use tooling inside Visual Code. There are some plugins that are integrated with Camel K, and you can see here kind of, there's a full application running, and down here it should start locking. Um, the code is saying hello Camel K from, let's see, it seems to be hanging. That's a bit weird. Um, I'll go and say Camel get done foo. It's hanging a bit here. That's quite so. That's one of the um, I am on an Apple M1 architecture. Uh, so there are sometimes a little quirks with um, um, with the Kubernetes on that one because it's a different architecture. Uh, so let's try again. I'm just trying to run it from the um, um, terminal instead and see if it's running. Yes, this is live demo, so you will not see loading graphs from. Okay. Yep. So let's try a different name just to. Read this one because I have a previous render. Okay, that's it for the, <laughs> oh yes, now is something coming. You can see hello Cam K from Java. So we get that, it runs now. And we can see bar is here, the bar file is here. I can say by camel, like the file. And let's see, I didn't, I will delete bar. I'm going to run para Java dev mode. So I have to run in developer mode. That means the integration is keep running. And if I do source code change, it will automatically reload like it did with uh, Quarkus. Um, so if I say it's by camel K, I can say by two and I can make it a bit faster. And by the way, I can use I ought to be able to use yes. So there's some tooling. It understands the parameters from Camel. So the default is one second. I'd set it a bit quicker. I saved the file and now it should be reloaded and it should be a bit quicker to to do the do the logging if it works. Yes, now I'm fast. Right. Okay. So that's a a, a bit quick. Um, Camel K demo. Uh, there are a lot more to Camel K, um, so we'll go and see that in a minute. Um, so, what happened behind the scenes was that I was using uh, the Camel CLI tool. You can see here in the center, and I say Camel run and then the name file. Um, it's not actually the only way to run the application, you know, because 
camel case just using standard building blocks inside Kubernetes, something called a custom resource definition, DRDs. So what is that? What happens is that on the right hand side you can see that the camel CLI tool will create a integration CRD that has kind integration in YAML and install that inside the Kubernetes cluster. Then there is a camel case operator that watches for these CRDs and then the operator knows figures out what to do. So it's the job from the operator to materialize that CRD into a running container. So it can do a build, install and run and many other things. Um, it's quite um, elaborate what it does, but it makes it you know truly serverless, but it also makes it sort of like a project list. You don't have to stand up an entire big uh, Maven project or Gradle project and something like that. You can just focus on the business logic and, and the integration logic, which is you know typical uh, a single file, whether it's Java, Kotlin, Groovy, YAML, or XML or something like that, and build a small, you know, serverless application. Um, and and that leads us to the next and uh, the latest addition to the Camel family, which is Camelis. So the name Camelis actually comes from Camel route snippets. If you see the bold here, so that's where you contract these two Camelets. Those are route snippets. But essentially, it's a higher level level extraction above Camel itself, or Camel route, or more. So where you build a simplified interface that allows a lot more a, a wider audience, let's say, let's put it like that, to use Camelus. Actually, the Camelus are sort of like like an an app you can install from an app store. We have a Camel catalog. Uh, you can find that from the Camel website. It's also in GitHub on Camel slash Camelets. So that's where all the Camelets are hosted. So, you know, people in the community can contribute new Camelets. They come with some information um, so that allows them to be visualized here. They have icon descriptions and other things we're going to see in a moment. So there are three types of Camelets. Um, typically, there are sources which, you know, can take data from some external system and come to the platform. You know, in Camel, it'll uh, lingo that will be a consumer. Then there are sinks that can take data from the platform and send out to an external system. That's outwards. <clears throat> That's is, uh, in Camel lingo, that was the Camel producer. And then you have um, actions. These are all kind of different things that Camel can do, do some message transformation or ERP routing and whatnot. You, you kind of decide what it should do. Um, so the spec of a camera is in three parts. So basically, there is the is a CRD. So in the top, we have kind uh, API version and metadata and a spec. So it's a camera as a kind, and then some annotations with you know provider icon and whatnot. And the center, you have the spec. That's where it's a JSON schema that defines the data shape of the input and the outputs and with parameters that are required, which are optional, and which have default values and description for the parameters and what types they accept, whether they are Boolean, integers, and whatnot. So it's a self-containing uh, entire solution for, you can say, a recipe, an integration recipe. And in the bottom, we have the Camel DSL with the routing flow, where you can write that in, in inline as YAML or Java, whatever you want. So this one is something that takes from Amazon S3, a bucket, and and you know you can customize that uh, to read after read and so on. Um, if we're going to see a Camelot demo, then let's go and look at that. Um, so I am going here. So actually, this time I am demonstrating a little Camelot that are not running inside Kubernetes. So it's running standalone, just to demonstrate. You know, um, we want Camelot to be a thing from Camel that you can run anywhere. It does not necessarily tie to to Camel K or, or the cloud. So you can find some examples. And here's one called Camelot main. Uh, if I look at that one, it's I customized that a little bit. So basically what we have here is from a Camelot earthquake source. I'll get back to that. Then I do a little delay, I convert the message to a string, I set a file name header with the earthquake text. 
and then I send that to another camlet. And there are two ways I can do that. I can write it like this with a long UI with all the parameters for an FTP camlet, FTP sync, or I can specify it separated with the parameters one by one. So maybe more somehow more readable. This is the one I've been doing here. And after that, I do a little locking where I lock the location of some earthquakes. So this camlet is able to get the information about all the latest earthquakes that happen on our planet and we want to send them to an FTP server. So in the bottom terminal, I actually have a, a FTP server. And I'm going to touch, the, and then I'm going to tail that file so it's empty. And then up here, I'm going to run this one. So I'm actually just going to call camel run. So it's running standalone. So we have a plugin in called camel run in camel. And it's running this one. You can see in the bottom the the FTP file is being appended with all the new earthquakes, and then you can see in the top each earthquake is is log. Now, um, if I scroll up, what you should notice is that this one is able to download all the necessary dependencies of this um, earthquake camera, and also for the FTP camera um, using the FTP component. So in essence, there's actually only a um, uh, this product is very tiny. It only has one single dependency from Camel. This is the Camel Camelet main. So the idea is being able to bootstrap Camel standalone using a main class that are, you know, opinionated for running Camelets and trying to develop and, and play with Camelets, not necessarily running on containers. And if you start to use different Camelets, then it can automatically download them from GitHub from the official Camel repository and install the dependencies on the fly for you so you can play with that. Um, we are continuing working on this to do a little more like Quarkus developer mode so you can, you know, do code changes and whatnot on the fly and so on. So it's a way of giving Camelets to a wide audience and developers to try and play with Camelets without necessarily have to use an uh, OpenShift or Kubernetes uh, installation. Uh, if we're going to go and show a bit, uh, let me, oh, that's in the browser. I share button here. So if you go to the GitHub camel camelets, this is the FTP sync camelet. So it's basically just a single jaml file that, you know, you can write 93 file lines, not too bad. So the metadata, the description of it, some required parameters you must provide their names and defaults and whatnot. And these are the dependencies. So here you can see which camel component that this one uses. And this is what the tool is able to introspect and therefore download them for you. And this is the flow how the the, the camel is in, implemented. And if you go here, you can see basically all the cameras we have. We need to organize this better in the future because now they're just in one giant jump on the route but we need to organize that into different uh, subfolders. Um, that's the little Camlet demo. Um, I'll get back to that in a minute where we're going to run it, hopefully better on, on the cloud or Kubernetes. Now, there are three categories for instantiating and using Camelets. You know, it's more like the different audience, if that's maybe a better title for this one. So we have a binding mode, which are users that never know anything about uh, camel itself, they just want to bind two systems, A to B, and there's a way for, for camel to do that, I play a role in that. Then you can also write a camel route, which is sort of like that, where I did with camel K, with the camel init foo and camel init bar, where you have a single file, you write some camel route in that one. You need a bit of camel experience to know that, and you can, even though if you're using XML or YAML, etc., no Java compiler. And then there is, you can go and build your own camel templates or camlets and whatnot, which feel more like a low level. You need to be understanding camel and then maybe, you know, do that. So three different levels. Uh, but just to take a moment uh, and talk about the exciting thing about camel bindings or uh, binding service is so, as I said, you just want to connect two systems and for that you can use binding. 
so on the slide we have something called an injector. So I need to buy an injector with echo. And what happens is that again, this is a custom resource definition that gets installed inside the Kubernetes, so OpenShift, a CRD. It's kind, it's camel binding, and then it has a source and a sync which refers to something, and in this case it happens to be a camelet. So it refers to a camelet named injector and a camelet named echo. And then again, the operator is doing all the magic how to materialize that. So actually, this is one step or one level higher than before with the integration. So the operator is actually based on the camelet binding, creating another CRD, which is the integration CRD, where it has source code generated the flows, the camel route. And this one is very simple because this was just two bindings, connect uh, injector with echo. So it will be from injector and then to echo. So very short one. But this is just to demonstrate that uh, the binding can do more than that. It doesn't have to be as simple as this one, but it's, you know, the principle is there. And let's try that one. And this is where we cross our fingers because what I am going to do is to take that earthquake source, which is a camelot that, you know, gives us the uh, news about earthquakes happening on, on the planet. And I'm just going to use, send them to a lock camel log endpoint, but this can be some, anything else. You can send it to a Kafka topic, a Kernadio channel, and, and others. So let's just try to that one. And if I do that, I can go and see my pot if that terminal works. Maybe not. Oops. Yes. So now the pots are, there's a pot running earthquake source to, and if I stern that one, that is a little, um, this is utility to easily do locks, and you can see deer coming here. The, is you no know, Alaska, for example. There have only been an earthquake in Alaska. Now, before we continue on the slides, just want to show you a little tool that is really nifty if you're running on, on OpenShift Minikube or something like that. This is K9S. So this is sort of like a little shell you can um, browse around and look. So these are looking at the parts. You can, you know, look at the S logs. You can describe this YAML file with all the glory, what's going on. And you can also look at other resources and just to filter for the camel. Camel resources that is installed by Camel K. We have Camel builds, we have catalog, we have integration kits, platforms, integrations. These are the ones that are running the integrations and the binding. This is the binding we are creating, earthquake source to lock. Look at that binding um, in the YAML. You can see here, this is the nice thing. There's uh, even the icon embedded. And you can see what it is. So it goes to a, a source. You know, the, just mind that this one is sort of alphabetic. So sync is before source, which is a bit weird because source comes first. But this has a source, this refers to another camel called earthquake source. And then the sync is just a camel endpoint using log colon quick. So this is the that binding. Anyway, I just want to mention about this awesome tools um, and go back to this slides. So we have well, DNA. So again, the camel binding can work with uh, Kafka using the Swimship project. You can send to any Kafka topic. You can go to a Kinetic channel. You can also do camel, of course, and there are more to come in the future. And actually, camel bindings are really good for web UIs and, and whatnot. So this is actually a live slide, a GIF animation from the OpenShift web console that allows you to use a web console to Build this camelet binding where the form is web based and not um, uh, YAML based, etc. Um, so just give it a little second before um, it comes, yeah, it restarts itself. But basically, you can imagine that there is a sort of like an app store of camelets or KNATO sources, um, event sources you want to use. And this is event sources from Knative, and you can also find the ones that are from uh, Camel. Um, so these are like the Camel catalog. And what we're going to use is, I think, is the Telegram source. So every time there's a chat on, on a Telegram, you can do something. And you click on that one and just give it a little go. Create event source. And here's 
coming, what I'm talking about is that is the standard Camelot that you saw from upstream in the GitHub repository, and you have a form view. So it's a nice form with drop downs, and you know anything is is nice, and you non DevOps can you know enter details and create their bindings. Okay, let's go and just briefly talk about what is the awesomeness of Camel K platform. You get all the connectors from Camel. It's serverless. You know, it works with Knative. You can do scaling up and down, auto scaling. Um, I am running on Minikube locally. You can install Knative locally as well, but it's quite still quite heavy on the resources. So you need more CPU and memory and whatnot. And I haven't done that, uh, so my mini cube is default just with two gigs of memory. It's very small and tiny, but it's, it works fine for standard camel. Uh, we use Quarkus as the runtime in camel case, so we get all that you know ahead of time thing we can do with build time optimization, and just awesome thing. Uh, where can you find more information? Uh, just some links in the slides. Uh, if I have to. You know, point out a few things. Then there is actually something called Awesome, Awesome Camel K. So there's a community users that start to create, collect links to very um, great material on Camel K, the second last one. If you wonder a bit about what tooling there is for Camel, then Christina Lin just posted a video yesterday about uh, the awesome tools that she found and, and there's around Camel. It could be, that's a worthwhile of this. Uh, the exams are generally on just on GitHub on the, the Apache Camel. And the last one is also quite nice to see. That's the Chuck Norris demo that Peter Pelaga did, which use uh, Knative and, and everything like that. And that's good description on step-by-step -step how to install and run that one. So now we are open for Q&A. And thanks for staying with us all the way. And sorry for running a bit over the time. So I will stop sharing and we will go to Brian and we can hear about the questions. We have a few questions. I uh, hopefully we can get through them. Um, but so David asks, is Camel Corcus a supported offering yet? Um, if it's not, what is the ETN support? That's a very great question. So Camel Corcus is on the way. Um, so definitely coming this year um, as a supported offering from Red Hat. So you can get that. Um, Camel K as well is coming. As a supported offering on as a product as well, and because they use the same set of binaries, same set of Camel Quarkus, you know, it makes big uh, benefit from Camel or Red Hat that we, you know, have both products out there you can use. So it's coming, yeah, this year. Um, there are, I'm not sure if I can say it, but we have a pilot customer that are using that with a support exception for running, let's say, technical pre preview builds of Camel Quarkus currently as we speak. Okay. Okay. Carson asks, um, back to the activity chart that you showed at the beginning of the presentation, he said there was quite a rise in new level of activity. Was that for 2019 or was that effect happening in 2020? Uh, and what was different? What what was the reason behind that level of activity rise? Um, I have three fingers. That's three humps. Camel tree development started there. It's all about Camel 3. Okay. Yes. Excellent. So last question uh, from Olu. He want, uh, they want to know what was the name of that awesome tool that you just demonstrated for inspecting manifested, uh, uh, no word there, within a cluster? Yes. Absolutely. Uh, it's an awesome tool. It's called K9S. K9S. Okay. And you can install it using packet managers. I am on a Mac, so I can use Brew to install it. Brew install K9S. Yes, All awesome right. tool. I love it too. And you can use it to see behind the curtains and see everything what Camel K does and see all the great stuff it does and all the nasty things it does. At the end of the day, it's just standard CRDs installed inside Kubernetes and then operators uh, reacting up on that. So there's no, let's say, window login. And these CRDs are, they have a public API. And so yeah. standard building blog in, in Kubernetes, that's the way to go. Okay, I'm gonna try to squeeze one more question that came in mm -hmm. on the chat from Justin. Are there plans to directly integrate with Linkerd similar to Envoy or Istio? Okay, so 
from Camel K itself, no, we are not, let's say, in that game. And what I'm saying is that we are probably separating that. So this is something, let's say, a service mess uh, obligation is doing what kind of, you know, um, what they are using. So that will be something for the OpenSea service team to, for example, from Red Hat to, to better answer that. From my point of view, what you get with Camel is that it runs on whatever the platform provides for that, whether it's different. So we don't have necessarily any special Linka D or Envoy or Istio integration or something bits like that in Camel K. We use what the platform provides us. And also Camel K can run on just the vanilla Kubernetes. You don't necessarily need to have Knative and everything installed. I ran it on Minikube, so but it just adapts to that platform. It detects okay now K native is installed and whatnot. I can start to use, you know, K native building blocks for uh for you know running an integration. Not necessarily the standard traditional Kubernetes deployment. So instead, I'm using you know Knative for that. And of course, you can choose. Excellent. All right. Well, that runs through all our questions. So I would like to thank our guest, Klaus, Mr. Camel Ibsen, uh, for coming in and giving us a great overview of Apache Camel and the entire Camel ecosystem. Um, Klaus, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me, and thanks for you know staying around for so long. You know, it's hard to you know keep it short with so many things happening in Camel, and you also saw when the demos doesn't work, right? Uh, that no, always happens. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. Take care. No, it's good. Thank you very much. And with that, we'll wrap up another edition of Community Central. Thank you all very much for coming in with your great questions. Um, stay tuned for upcoming episodes of Community Central. Until then, be safe and have a great day.